All right, Luke, I'm going to, I want to discuss this subject-object distinction. Um, or actually, I'm just going to read someone else's writing about it because they can explain it a lot better than I would, and hopefully it brings um, some more definitions into the fray because it's a bunch of words that someone wrote in a book. The book is called The Ever-Present Origin by Gene Gebser. There have been a lot of videos on it already because it's my favorite book ever. Um, but let me read it. The book is basically about the evolution of human consciousness, and right now we're moving according to Gene Gebser, from the mental stage to the integral stage. And that transition is causing us to rethink these dichotomies and these dualisms like subject-object. Not get rid of them, but realize that they are one way, one tool of conceptualizing the world, but they are not the world itself. And that they are a projection of the mind and not original. So not the deepest level of our experience. But I'm just going to read... A significant and decisive transformation, like the change affecting the oppositional concepts dealt with above, has begun with respect to the, to the validity of the division of the world into subject and object. We have seen in the previous section that this dualism can no longer be maintained in physics. The same attitude is gradually gaining currency in biology as well. This change was inaugurated by the environmental theory of J. Von Exkoll, a theory of the interconnections of the world and not of the oppositionalities of the world previously held to be valid. Today there is no longer a predominance of certain perspectively, perspectively fixed relationships to an opposite, but even in the natural sciences there is an insistence on the diphanous and aperspectival manifestation of interrelationships and not merely on the relativistic establishment of relations. The supersession of the subject-object dichotomy is not the same as their loss. As we pointed out in part one, it no longer threatens man with the loss of subjectivity subjectivity, or with, the, or with identification with an object. On the contrary, there is now the decisive supersession of the personal ego and the impersonal world, or the masses, by the suprapersonal, or more accurately, by the apersonal itself, which is not blindly subjugated to the relationships dependencies, conditional conditionalities, and temporal strictures, and consequently to the underdetermining structures and forms of realization, and is therefore capable of perceiving the interconnections. This leap from the mental into the integral, on the basis of which the supersession of dualism in biology is taking place, is an event of historical significance for mankind. Ah, he said mankind. Uh, that's a, that's, I, I would say humankind, but anyways. It constitutes one of the manifestations of the aperspectival world. This leads us to our third and final point. The rational comprehension of life is overdetermined into an arational perception of life. Once again, we expressly remind the reader that the arational is not to be confused with irrational. The irrational belongs to the mythical realm, the arational to the integral. The mathematical stru structures of physics, for example, which are no longer rationally comprehensible and elude a conceptual and three-dimensional realization are in this sense preformations of an a-rational perception. These new structures of physics are the expression of a fourfold, of a four-dimensional consciousness. This is all the more true since consciousness with its propensity for transparent perception, as we have called it, which replaces the conceptualization or representation of the world, has begun to manifest itself in the new concepts of biology. It should be mentioned here in passing that Javon Uxcoll conceived of structures as musical, that is, magically emphasized structures laden with energy and movement which form the basis of the biological, and which he, in consequence, defines as scores, although his conception of structure was not as profound as that held later by others. Okay, so what the hell did I just say? And why is it relevant? Well, it's relevant to this thing I'm trying to say about origin. That origin is not something, uh, originality is not something in the painting itself. And it's not in a perceiver itself or in an ego itself. It's not the ego that recognizes originality because the ego itself is um, a conceptual construction. And the ego itself is not original. The ego is based on tradition. It's based on the culture that it is sort of uh, programmed into us and indoctrinated into us and that we have one perspective to look at the world from and that's our ego and that's your real identity. So goes this, this classical story. I think, that's, I think that's oversimplified and I think 
at the level of original experience. In other words, the base, not the first, I mean, original makes it sound like it came first before anybody else's ideas contaminated or something. That's not, I mean, that's what the dictionary defines original as. Gebser in this book is trying to say, no, 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 that's the way our old way of thinking translates um, origin into its own language because it's th it thinks that origin is this temporal, um, temporally um, laid out sort of progress that the origin is the beginning and what comes later is not original because it's not the first to do what's, whatever's happening. That's, that's, an, that's, that's the wrong way of thinking about origin. Origin is ever-present and it's not restricted to an ego's consciousness to recognize origin. You only, I think we can only experience art when we transcend ourselves, our egos. We can't recognize an artistic expression if we're maintaining our, our individual perceiver as the basis of that, of that translation of, of the artwork into our internal experience. Because if we do that, we're framing it. We're making it, up into, we're, we're making it go past through this objective filter. We've got the, the Ayn Rand red glasses on again, and we're only acknowledging everything except red art, because red art doesn't fit into our, our perceiver's um, our perceivers' tubes, our, our perceivers' open, small openings to the world that allows the information to come in. Um, okay, I don't want to make this video any longer, so hopefully I clear something up, or maybe I made it even more confusing, or I don't know. Hopefully, something good came in.